is the University of the Air. Our guests are William Florescu, the general director of the Florentine Opera in Milwaukee, which is performing Albert Herring March 8th through 17th, and Riddell Roselle, who sings the part of the, well, for the most of the opera, at least, all too virtuous Albert. <laughs> Welcome to University of the Air. Glad to be here. Thank Me you. Too. Well, let me start by saying I've never seen Albert Herring performed, so can you start by telling me what have I missed? Well, I think it's, I think it's what I do I agree with uh, Mr. Richter that it's one of the great comedies because it, it while it, it has all the great archetypes of English characters in it, um, Britain being the great genius that he is, the, those archetypes are infused with um, real characters, so they're not just you know cutouts; they're real people. And the whole idea that Britain sort of focused on his whole life, the idea of the outsider and how that person fits into society, is dealt with perhaps for the only time in Britain's life in a comic way. And so Brit Albert, as he makes the journey from innocence to a more um, open and knowing person, um, it's just done both dramatically and musically brilliantly. It is interesting how often Britain used that theme, isn't it? When you think about Peter Grimes or even Billy Budd, based on an American theme in the latter case. He has that perspective of the outsider, and uh, I wonder how much of that. Well, actually, uh, uh, Albert Herring was supposed to be, to some extent, the character of self-portrait of Britain. Absolutely. I mean, if you, um, <clears throat> if you read about Britain a lot, you know that he had a lifelong struggle between his uh, loss of innocence and struggling with who he was as a human being and, and knowing more about the real world. And so, I think of all of his characters, even more than Grimes or Billy Budd, um, Albert sort of represents who, who Britain is as a person. And, um, and I think that's why it, it works so incredibly well. And he, so, wrote, he wrote that part for his other half, Peter Pierce, didn't uh, he? Yeah, absolutely. Um, lifelong partner, who I, I was lucky enough to get to know and sing for when I was back in my performing days. So it's a, a double treat for me to get to be involved in this. And Rodell, what does it feel like to be the title character? of Albert Herring, and what is your understanding of sort of who you are and come to be in the course of this opera? Well, you know, I'm, uh, I've always mostly done character roles, and I think uh, Albert Herring, the, the character itself, is one of the best character roles written for a tenor. Um, I've done it once when I was in college, and it's really a pleasure and an adventure to actually sing it again in a, on a broad, broader stage. And uh, I, I'm excited to actually explore more of the character. I've known a little about it when I was in college, and now exploring it, exploring it again. And I think um, it's it's just a lot of it's a I uh, consider it a coming of age uh, opera. It certainly and it's, it, it is, and it's you know from uh, from the the development of the character from someone going timid to actually um, exploring life outside. Uh, and that, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. It's and it's I'm excited. Can you give us the plot and the whole business about the May Queen problem? Sure. You know, and even though this is a um, an early 20th century British plot, it's something that I think resonates so well today. It's basically the protagonist of, of the opera, people you never see, and that's the young women whose characters are assassinated <laughs> at the beginning. Um, that that they're. Uh, um, deemed not worthy of being the May Queen, they need to find somebody innocent. If you've sh as much as shown an ankle in public, you're not worthy, so they find this young, sort of flummoxed boy to be the May Queen. And the, so w the first thing that happens, we, we see these these intolerant townspeople who then pick this, this boy to be May King, and then the characters around that, and, and they can't leave that innocence alone. They have to, in some way, warp it in terms of, in, whether it's through rum, or the expectations that they put upon him. And so the journey that we see that he makes by being, um, you know, a, a evidenced by the, the, how they're moved by these characters and how he makes the journey to wise at the end, I think is pretty amazing. And, uh, but the, it, it's in good fun, but in some ways for me, it's his deepest piece because comedy and sometimes, sometimes makes these real human emotions more real than tragedy, at least for me. Well, let's get a little into the choosing of the May King and uh, hear how Britain treats that. Absolutely. Uh, track five. Yeah.